Hey, Justin here with Stay at Home Dads Podcast. Welcome back to the place I talk about a lot of dad stuff as well as a lot of guy stuff. So thank you for tuning in and uh, happy new year or New Year's Eve, I guess, as this is posted. It is New Year's Eve today. So hope you guys had a great 2021. Christmas is finally over. Stick a fork in me. I am finally done with Christmas. The uh, the kids had a blast, you know, they're right at that perfect age where this is all pretty awesome, so that makes it a lot of fun. Like I said last week, just seeing their faces and the joy and excitement, you know, that's that's really just what it's all about. They got some things they wanted and some things they needed, and I think my wife may have had some enjoyment from her gifts as well, even though they weren't that exciting, but it's things she wanted, so that's all that matters, right? And no, no Lexus got dropped off in my house. So just to update you on that. And no Raptor either, but that's okay. So is it bad that my tree is already down, put away, stockings are gone, the garland is gone, the candy canes are gone, a mere six days post-Christmas? I really hope that doesn't make me anti-Christmas or anything like that. But I guess I'm just the type of guy that once the holiday's over, the holiday's over for me. I just want to get that stuff put away, get it promptly stored back into the basement. And I'm not really a fan of looking at decorations three or four months after the holiday is over, still floating around my house. So just wanted to nip that in the bud and get that taken care of. All right, so I just wanted to take this week's episode and maybe just reflect a little bit on this past year get ready to celebrate New Year's, proclaim a few New Year's resolutions maybe, something that I typically don't do. I don't really do the whole resolution thing, but I think I'm going to this year. I don't know, just something kind of kind of fun. Uh, maybe I can do it with my kids and my family and and maybe, maybe be better in 2022. So for 2022, I think I really want to just uh, focus on putting out better content through this podcast for you guys that are listening better guests better equipment uh better topics uh just kind of you know just elevate it a little bit and and keep progressing i guess i also want to do that with my youtube page my other page that's not really associated with this and kind of keep putting out content get some consistency back and get more videos out there i don't know i enjoy doing it and i kind of want to step it up a little bit so And also on a personal level, I really want to better myself in 22. I really want to be a happier person in the new year, smile more, enjoy my life more, I guess. I'm kind of tired of being so serious all the time. And I know that's probably conveyed through this too. I I feel very serious at times and I don't mean to, it just kind of comes off that way. So be a little less serious, maybe stress less. I feel like I used to be... uh, a pretty funny and sarcastic person at one point in my life. Joked around a lot and and I really kind of want to get back to that. Do you ever feel like you fall into that kind of a uh, funk ever? I know I've probably talked about it in past shows on here, but I think I tend to go in waves. Happy and enjoyable to funk and grump, you know? I think I want to change that a little bit. I mean, my life is genuinely great. I have no complaints, but maybe I take that stuff for granted a little bit, and I actually think a lot of people do. We just need to maybe take a step back and realize it. I mean, think about it. I have a roof over my head, actually a really nice roof, nice house. I've got two reliable cars in the garage that are paid for. I have two very happy and healthy kids. They have everything they need. They're in sports and programs. Uh, my wife has a has an awesome job. I get to stay home with my kids. I mean, who gets to say that, you know? Me and my wife don't really stress over bills and money. We take vacations. And I don't know. Those are all things to really be proud of. And all those things right there, some people don't have. Some people are worried about their next month's rent or other bills. Some people don't have a car. They can't afford to go on vacation. Hell, I mean... Some people don't even have a house. Some parents have kids that didn't have a great Christmas. Or their kids are not exactly healthy. Or they're going through some medical condition. Or maybe maybe they passed away. I don't know. 
And no, I'm not always saying to just be happy with what you have, blah, 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 like you you kind of hear, right? I just think we could take a, a little moment and really appreciate the things that we have right here in front of us. And maybe I don't do that enough. I don't know. Does that make sense at all? Or do I just sound like every other entitled blowhard out there trying to relate with everybody else? I don't, I don't know. Anyways, that's what I'm going to try and do. More smiles, more humor, be happy for everything I have, but still work hard and strive to grow, I guess. Sounds quite cliche, I don't know. Anyways, this brings me to my next point, or idea, or theory, I don't know. But what is with people, certain people, calling the current year or the previous year total shit? You know what I mean. Or we see it all over social media, people complaining about how terrible the previous year was. Every year they say that the world has once again taken a big giant dump on them. And it's not just 2021 or 2020. It seems to be every year these people say this. And I think for those people that this is just their default. Maybe they're just genuinely unhappy all the time. And this is their default that they, they go to. And they always have a reason too. They always have some reason as to why the universe took a dump on them. They didn't get a promotion, they didn't get that raise, they didn't become famous, or their dream didn't come true, or insert blame the government reason here, or the Knicks didn't make the playoffs, or you you know what I mean, just whatever, it always seems to be somebody else's fault. And I mean seriously, yes, I get you. You may have not had a great year, but that just means that we keep on pushing right? Don't give up. Try more new things. Control what we can control. I mean, I can control what time I wake up. I can control if I go to the gym and work out or what food I eat or we can control how much effort we put into our jobs or into our kids or even into our relationships with our spouses. We can control those things. And yeah, I know with COVID still being a thing, People have died from that as well as they've died from a myriad of other things. So I know a lot of people have lost loved ones and that's hard. So that's a valid reason as to why someone may say a certain year sucked. But in my opinion, we can't really let that consume us either. I mean, my grandfather passed away this year, just a couple of months ago, actually. And, you know, I mean, I'm sad about it. Yeah, he was an amazing guy. Uh, I really enjoyed his company. I enjoyed talking with him, but he was also like 92 years old, so he wasn't young. He lived a long time, and he must have been doing something right to live that long. I mean, I hope I lived to that age. And before you think it, no, he didn't die of COVID. He was just really old and was declining in health overall. So, But he was a, he was a kick-ass dude. He worked really hard, and he had his own business, and I don't know. Yeah, he'll uh, he'll be missed for sure. But anyways, what I'm trying to get at is it's tough losing someone and going through that, and I feel you. It's it's hard, and you have every right to say that your year has been awful because of that. But for those people that say every year was terrible or you didn't do what you wanted to do, maybe you gave yourself excuses as to why you didn't accomplish those goals you set for yourself, or you gave yourself a reason not to try. I don't know. I'm not a therapist, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. All jokes aside. All right, so we know my resolution this new year is be happier, smile more, don't take my life so seriously, and really enjoy my family, as well as work hard and try to grow this show. Maybe those are kind of generic. I don't know. Work hard and be happier. I mean, that does sound kind of generic, but whatever. Those are mine. So what are some other popular or good resolutions out there, I guess? First, let me just say that resolutions or goals, are those the same thing? A New Year's resolution and a goal? Are they similar? Are they, are they, am I wrong? I don't know. Anyways, they don't always have to be money oriented or revolve around becoming something. And I think a lot of people get into that mindset and they think, oh, 2022, I'm going to blow up with my music or my art will be first prize or or my podcast is just going to go pop off or whatever it may be and maybe not a lot of people but some for sure and when those things don't happen we are kind of back to that negative 2022 sucks you know mindset 
which, yeah, we can work hard in those aspects to better our products or ourselves. I mean, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But ultimately, I cannot control whether more people listen to this podcast. That's that's not really in my control. So what are some things that are in our control? What do you want to change about yourself? Well, we always have the tried and true quit smoking, drink less, eat healthier, exercise, all of those things. They kind of fall into the category of taking care of yourself and overall being healthier. And I know it's a big mind over matter type situation, and they're challenging, yes, but controllable ultimately by me and by you. I actually remember my dad used to smoke quite a bit, and he had quit and started again and quit and started again, you know, the the whole drill. But one day, maybe he was just finally ready to be done, but one day he just said, you know what, I'm sick of it, I'm done. And he quit smoking cold turkey, and that was it. He told me that he just he just got sick of it, he got sick of how he felt, got tired of coughing and hacking all the time, and he was just done with it. So I think if you are ready, then you will be able to do it. If you're ready to make a change and you get to that point, then you're you're going to succeed. I imagine it was tough for him. He probably had times where he really wanted to light one up, but I think if you really tell yourself and say, nope, and understand that if I smoke one, one will turn into 30, and then you'll be back to square one. And I think we all have that little voice in our heads that we can kind of pep talk ourselves. And I don't know, just use it. Even if it's with exercise or trying to lose weight or eat better, it's the same thing. Think of how much better you'll feel and how much happier you'll be. Maybe your resolution is even different than that. It could be reading more books or getting off your devices or a combo of the both or doing projects around your home. Maybe it's being a better dad or a better parent. Something as simple as thinking before you react with our kids. I know I've talked about my moments on here a bunch, how I tend to snap at my kids for something little or insignificant and... I need to work on that, so maybe I need to put it on my list, I don't know. Maybe that could be a resolution for somebody. I actually read this article on pioneerwoman.com. Yeah, uh, I know, Pioneer Woman, but uh, have you seen some of her cooking? She's got a show on the weekends. Man, some of her stuff looks damn good. But anyways, the article, I'll link it in the description. Um, The author just goes through some great ideas for New Year's resolutions Um, I think there's like 40, 30 or 40 of them on there. And there's some good ideas on there. One of them was even uh, getting used to telling people no. And I thought that was kind of interesting. It says if you're a natural people pleaser, that getting comfortable with saying no can actually improve your relationships with friends and family. It will also free you up to focus on other things in your life. Like your resolution of saying no. But there was a bunch of other good ones as well, like controlling your spending or making a kick-ass movie list and watching them all throughout the year or trying to sleep better, go to bed earlier, um, reducing single-use plastic. That's kind of a good one. But yeah, there's a bunch of good ones on there. So check that out. Another good resolution for somebody may be to find a hobby, something outside of work that you enjoy to do. um, Do it. I think a lot of people get so wrapped up in their jobs and their careers that they forget or maybe they just don't have the time to do things that they enjoy. Maybe you don't even know what your hobby would be. So you may have to try out and dabble in a bunch and see what you like. Reading books or building stuff or hiking or cooking or writing even, whatever it may be. Having a hobby is much better than vegging out in front of the TV or your phone. And plus a hobby will give you something to talk about at the next Christmas party, right? So just try to find something that inspires you and do your research and try it out. It's worth a shot. Oh, and here's a little uh, tidbit of information for you. Maybe a morsel of motivation. According to a study done in the Journal of Clinical Psychology, people who set New Year's resolutions are 10 times more likely to actually change their behavior than people who don't make these beginning of the year goals. So that right there is a great reason to sit down and declare that resolution, 100%. So once we make our little declarations, how do we go about keeping them? Well, I found another article for you. I know you love them. 
according to verywellminded.com, they say to choose a specific goal. Don't just choose a blanket statement like get in shape or drink less. Focus in and actually choose something a little more specific like go for one walk a day or lose 10 pounds. Something that's a little bit more achievable. They also say to limit your resolutions. Psychology professor Richard Wiseman, ah, Wiseman, yes. He suggests that you pick one and focus all of your new year energy on that rather than trying to tackle many goals at once, which I agree with. I don't think I have a long list of resolutions, just a few in there, but maybe I still need to whittle it down a little bit and maybe focus in a little bit more. I don't know. They say that achieving even one small goal can boost your belief in yourself, which is kind of cool. They say taking on too much at once is an overwhelming task because establishing new behavioral patterns takes time and sustained effort. This isn't some done in a week or done in a month type of deal here. So just like the song Little Acorns by the White Stripes, just like that little squirrel storing up nuts for the winter, break your problems down into little pieces and carry them away one by one, and you'll be able to take on your goal. So be like the squirrel. If you haven't heard that song, go check that song out. I would love to play a piece in here, but I'm assuming that copyright stuff would kill me, so I can't do it. Maybe I'll just risk it one time. I don't know, but check it out. The article also says put time into planning your goal and not wait until the last minute to figure one out, so maybe I should have talked about this a month ago. I don't know. Oh well. Experts suggest you brainstorm how you will tackle a major behavioral change. The steps you will take and why you want to do it and all that stuff. Write it all down in detail and that will help you stick to your goal. It says have tactics in place for when you are struggling or met with challenges. So when shit gets really hard, what will you do? If you start with no plan, you might be giving up at the sight of an obstacle. So say your goal is to only drink alcohol on the weekends, and then the boys call you up on Thursday night for happy hour. What are you going to do, right? So you have to have an action plan in place. They also say to start small, that taking on too much too quickly is a common reason why resolutions fail. I talked about that earlier. Slapping down something that is crazy restrictive or a large change in the way you live is probably going to result in failure. Refer to my drinking example, drinking with the boys. If I were to say no alcohol in 2022, is that doable for someone that enjoys the occasional drink with friends? Well, possibly, but probably not. Something more realistic would be to limit myself to two to three times drinking alcohol a week. And this is just an example. I don't drink that much. I hardly drink once a week, but I'm just using it as an example. And then you look at your plan, and then if you think that becomes too hard, or if you are able to do that, maybe you could adjust it accordingly. Maybe you could bring it down to one to two drinks a week if you're, you know, trying to wean yourself down. Some people can't quit that stuff cold turkey, and that's fine. Or if you're trying to eat healthier, say, try cutting back on drinking soda if you drink soda. Or maybe eat two meals a week that have more vegetables than you're used to eating if you struggle in that department. Lastly... And I know I'm almost through this, but lastly, they said learn to adapt. We kind of just talked about that a bit, but setbacks are normal. The article says setbacks are one of the most common reasons why people give up on their New Year's resolution. If you suddenly fall back into an old bad habit, don't view it as a total failure. The path to your success, your New Year's resolution, is not always straight. You're going to have to deviate sometimes. So if you succumb to your old ways and you drank one too many days for your week, don't let that ruin your whole plan. That was just one day, so don't use that as your excuse to throw in the towel. Personally, one thing that I would keep in mind with New Year's resolutions or goals or whatever you're striving to do is really get used to delayed gratification. Get used to that. What we change on January 1st won't make a shitting bit of difference in a week or in a month. So whether it's working out or working on your dream job or eating better or trying to lose weight, which I know those are all the common ones. That's why I'm mentioning them. That's why people flood the gym on that first month. They, they flood the gym. They're, they're pounding the weights for, you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month, and they don't see those results. 
and they get upset and they get frustrated and then they bail and they say, this isn't worth it. This isn't working. And, and they throw in that towel. So I'm here to say that it is working. Believe me, it is just keep doing it and keep sticking with it. And you'll see results no matter what it is, if it's drinking less or working out or whatever. So Anyways, enough about that, enough about resolutions. I'm kind of tired of talking about them. You're probably tired of listening to them. So I just kind of wanted to wrap up this episode with a little snapshot of my 2021. I don't know if you care or not, but I'm going to do it anyways. So it was a pretty good year for me, I'll be honest. Um, For me and my family, uh, my wife started a new job. She's much happier. She gets to spend a lot more time at home with the girls and with me. So that is really awesome. I've continued to be a stay-at-home dad, which I am really embracing. I I love being with my kids and, and kind of doing those duties and showing them new things and just enjoying their time. I mean, I know a lot of dads don't get that, and and that's the thing. I get to do it. I don't have to do it. I get to, and, and I enjoy it. I, I love it. I started this podcast in 2021 with a good friend of mine, another stay-at-home dad. And we really just started it to have an outlet for us to be creative and voice our opinions, I guess, and and just kind of shoot the shit once a week. Sadly, though, he had to step away, but then I made the choice to continue putting out shows. So here we are. And it's evolved over this year that we've done this, and I imagine it will continue to evolve, and that's good hopefully for the better, with better topics and issues to talk about and less solo content for me, which means more guests. That's really what I want to happen with this. A lot more guests, interesting people, and different opinions on life and parenting and whatever else may come up. So hopefully I will be able to provide that to you all. And I know I may be a stay-at-home dad, and this show is called Stay-at-home Dads, but I want it to be for anyone out there that wants to listen. Working dads, or moms, or stay-at-home moms, or childless people, or dogs, or whatever. I mean, if you want to put it on for your bird during the day when you're gone at work, by all means, do it. Maybe Maybe your bird would like to listen to me. Anyways, that's it for this last show of 2021. I hope you all have a wonderful new year and I really hope you stick to your resolutions if you decide to make them please reach out to me on podbean.com or my instagram at vegas Raymer. let me know what you think let me know what you want to hear I know this is quite a saturated market this podcast market so if I can do stuff to make this show better I definitely will do that Also, please share the show with your friends or your family, subscribe, leave a review if you want. Anyways, uh, all that stuff really helps me out. So, and as always, you can grab this podcast on Apple podcast, Amazon music, Google podcast, as well as Spotify. And I will talk to you next year.